It was said that his own character resembled that coat, for his outward manner was rough, but his inward disposition soft and kind. It is a pity that such a man could not have been kept free from trouble. But so harassing were his disputes with the representatives of the people, that he fell into a fever, of which he died, in 1720. The legislature had refused him a salary, while alive, but they appropriated money enough to give him a splendid and pompous funeral, and now grandfather perceived that little Alice had fallen fast asleep, with her head upon his footstool. Indeed, as Clara observed, she had been sleeping from the time of Sir Hovenden Walker's expedition against Quebec, until the death of Governor Burnett, a period of about eighteen years. And yet, after so long a nap, sweet little Alice was a golden-haired child, of scarcely five years old. It puts me in mind, said Lawrence, of the story of the enchanted princess, who slept many a hundred years, and awoke as young and beautiful as ever. Chapter 7. A few evenings afterwards, cousin Clara happened to inquire of grandfather, whether the old chair had never been present at a ball. At the same time, little Alice brought forward a doll, with whom she had been holding a long conversation. See, grandfather, cried she. Did such a pretty lady as this ever sit in your great chair? These questions led Grandfather to talk about the fashions and manners, which now began to be introduced from England into the provinces. The simplicity of the good old Puritan times was fast disappearing. This was partly owing to the increasing number and wealth of the inhabitants, and to the additions which they continually received, by the arrival and settlement of people from beyond the sea. Another cause of a pompous and artificial mode of life, among those who could afford it, was, that the example was set by the royal governors. Under the old charter, the governors were the representatives of the people, and therefore their way of living had probably been marked by a popular simplicity. But now, as they represented the person of the king, they thought it necessary to preserve the dignity of their station, by the practice of high and gorgeous ceremonials. And, besides, the profitable offices under the government were filled by men who had lived in London, and had their contracted fashionable and luxurious habits of living, which they would not now lay aside. The wealthy people of the province imitated them, and thus began a general change in social life. So, my dear Clara, said Grandfather, after our chair had entered the province house, it must often have been present at balls and festivals, though I cannot give you a description of any particular one. But I doubt not that they were very magnificent, and slaves in gorgeous liveries waited on the guests, and offered them wine in goblets of massive silver, were there slaves in those days?" exclaimed Clara. Yes, black slaves and white, replied Grandfather. Our ancestors not only bought Negroes from Africa, but Indians from South America, and white people from Ireland. These last were sold, not for life, but for a certain number of years, in order to pay the expenses of their voyage across the Atlantic. Nothing was more common than to see a lot of likely Irish girls, advertised for sale in the newspapers. As for the little negro babies, they were offered to be given away, like young kittens, perhaps Alice would have liked one to play with, instead of her doll, said Charlie, laughing. But little Alice clasped the waxen doll closer to her bosom. Now, as for this pretty doll, my little Alice, said Grandfather, I wish you could have seen what splendid dresses the ladies wore in those times. They had silks, and satins, and damasks, and brocades, and high head dresses, and all sorts of fine things. And they used to wear hooped petticoats, of such enormous size that it was quite a journey to walk round them, and how did the gentlemen dress? asked Charlie. With full as much magnificence as the ladies, answered Grandfather. For their holiday suits, they had coats of figured velvet, crimson, green, blue, and all other gay colors, embroidered with gold or silver lace. Their waistcoats, which were five times as large as modern ones, were very splendid. Sometimes, the whole waistcoat, which came down almost to the knees, was made of gold brocade. 